Coffee Kepler studies coffee, alien coffee. Bzz. flight to San Jose in about 90 minutes. I'm going to visit NASA Ames for one day. Uh, the reason I'm going down is a student from Germany who I've been working with has come over for a couple weeks and this is the only time I can get away to go down and visit her. here in Mountain View. I'm here for one day just to talk about flares and Kepler and K2 and the day is starting right. I'm gonna meet up gear for a cup of coffee. So we've got the uh, NASA turkeys. I have so so many questions. Turkeys? Turkeys? You don't have turkeys? <laughs> Not that I know of. We have squirrels. Well, there's our elephants. That's Kuiper. They used to be the airborne observatory of NASA. Telescope in a plane. So this predates Sophia. Also infrared? Yep. So it's uh, being auctioned. Auctioned? Yeah, it's on a <laughs> government auction website. You can buy it for $5,000. That's it? Yeah. 5000 bucks? Well, it doesn't fly anymore. 5000 bucks for a stork airplane. Let's see there. There it is. It's getting its catering. It hasn't flown since the 1990s, I think. Oh, I bet it would fly. This is where the Pioneer missions were operated from. And the first mission to Jupiter, the Pioneer 10, was it? This building. Is this where your office is? Yep. NASA basketball. I'm gonna lie on it and I'll film you say welcome. <laughs> welcome to NASA. Yeah, let's do that. Welcome to NASA. It's gonna be super cinematic. Good morning. It is beautiful here. Welcome to Mountain View, California. Welcome to NASA Ames. I've been to Ames four times, five times. I've been to Ames several times. But this is my first time being behind the, behind the gate. So I have a visitor badge. It makes me official. I can officially be here with no escort. Every other time I've been here, I've been here for a workshop. And so they've got a whole half of the base. You don't have to have security clearance to get in. Ames is a really cool place. It was built like originally in the 30s. There's a bunch of really big giant hangars, including like uh, dirigible or blimp hangars. So I'm here today, but I'm here for one day only. Got on a plane, uh, 5.30 departure, uh, having coffee with my buddy Geert by 8.30. Uh, and then I head home tonight at, uh, I think at 8.45 is my flight home. Going from Seattle to California, it's doable. You, I wouldn't do it all the time. The reason I was willing to come down here for a day is uh, there's a student uh, visiting from Germany who's been working on flares, so these energetic stellar explosions that I've worked on for a long time. Uh, she's really vastly improving my code. She's making it way, way better. She's fixing a lot of the bugs that I told myself I would fix or that I wanted to fix or that I didn't know how to fix. Uh, so I'm really impressed with what she's doing. Since so I said I'd come down for a day just to kind of help out, uh, mostly just to figure out what I can do to make her life easier. What can I delete? What can I remove? I'm not like her main advisor, but she and I have worked on and off together now for about a year. Uh, we've only met once before uh, in Boston, actually, at Cool Stars. Uh, but this is the first time we've gotten to sit down and actually work together for a day. Nothing replaces sitting down and just talking and drawing pictures and sketching things out. So. So the great privilege is to be able to get on a plane and come and talk to people. It's also just really neat to visit where Kepler happens, where Kepler runs. Uh, I'm talking with Geert Berenstein. He's the head of the guest observer office now here, holding right back here. That's, that's where Kepler happens. Basically where all the magic happens for Kepler. Well, except for the launch facility. I guess the real magic happens in outer space. Uh, and then through total happy circumstance, uh, Tom Barkley, who's now 
uh, head of the guest investigator office at TESS, uh, is here for a few days as well. Should be a fun day. Oh yeah, and the reason my beard has gotten completely out of hand is I'm not trimming it until I submit this paper uh, that I need to finish. It's gonna get longer. By the way, uh, I have no concerns about anything I say out loud in front of Jim Davenport. <laughs> and that means I can say anything at all, right? Correct. Everything's yep. public. Okay, good. The number is soft. Is that because are you worried about the impact on additional motion on the compression? Any questions about this? Nope. Okay. Unless someone else wants to say more about that, I won't. And they are stars for your purposes. So yeah, so you didn't tell me they were galaxies. I okay. Got, yeah. If you don't tell me they're galaxies, they're not galaxies. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Great job. Thank you. Thanks for letting me spectate. Yeah. All right, bye at Kepler headquarters. All right, well, that was a fun day hanging out at NASA. Did some good science. I got to sit in on a phone con, which kind of cool to see how they, how they work. What is fascinating is how precious the pixels are in Kepler. And they take such good care to make sure that every pixel is accounted for. Man, it's bright out here. Now I'm gonna go with uh, Tom Barkley and Geert to go tour around and just yeah. check out a bit to go tour it around and look at a little bit of the campus. Hi, Garrett. Hey, how's it going? Hey, do you want to see the new Kepler model? Yes. <laughs> Let's lead, go. Lead the way. All right. Tom, how long did you work at Ames? For six years. Over six years. Six years. Yeah. Did you miss California? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, California's pretty great. Didn't this rock used to be over by the McDonald's? I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's here. Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Next stop, space. I think I think that rocket is one that's designed to go up and come down. <laughs> on some... <laughs> Maybe if you park in that spot, you get the job. Oh, yeah. I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's how it works. Gear, you have to dress and park for the job you want. Let's go find Kepler. It looks like a big... Oh, there it is. It's pretty big, man. It's the size of a small astronomer. You know, it got damaged the image. I think we could put a mirror in it. Yeah, so what does it look like inside? I hope you appreciate that this is one of NASA's most bold and most successful endeavors. Thomas Barclay. I mean, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it changed the way we look at the night sky. Back in the airport. Long day, good day. Been hanging out with Geert and Tom Barkley. So, two people who have made my life markedly better in terms of their work at the various guest observer offices for NASA. And just sitting around having a drink, talking about the missions, talking about where we are. It was good, it was productive. It's illuminating too.